Like all ecosystems, Delaware Bay is amazingly complex, and there's no one way to fix it. Between climate change, sea level rise, and the growing risk of major storms, there's a lot to consider. It's not something that's one off. You know, we're going to do this job and then we're all going to go home. We're trying to produce a method, re create a method that we could replicate at a reasonable cost so that we could really make a difference. One of the things we're trying is to strengthen Bayshore beaches by building reefs, living underwater infrastructure. Anytime you put sand into the system, it's going to want to shift up and down the coast. And we're hoping that by creating some reef structures, some living shoreline techniques, uh, we can keep the sand where we're putting it. I mean, putting sand on the beach is fine. We can probably do that again if there's another hurricane. But if we have these reefs, this a system of reefs that are just offshore that break up that energy, then that means possibly less sand. We're going to lose less sand at the next storm event. These reefs are a beautiful way to take the waste products of whelk fishing, which can be so harmful to horseshoe crabs if not done in a sustainable way, and use them to rebuild the beaches that horseshoe crabs depend on. We end up with a bag like this with about 30, 40 shells in there, somewhere like that. Um, and these we then use to create a larger block of bags within the reef. By depositing strategically placed bags of seashells, we can attract oysters which strengthen these piles, offering additional protection against storm surges. These oysters also act as natural water filters, making the bay cleaner and healthier. As the number of um, oysters declined, the uh, water quality declined with it. So uh, if we can get more oysters into the bay, that's excellent. We've also been using the building of these reefs as a way to engage another of the bay's most valuable resources, its military veterans who often return to the area looking for new ways to contribute to their community's well-being. Um, military, you're trained, you can do anything. So they'll hand you the keys to a multi-million dollar machine and say, you go do it and you do it right. And that's how it was here. And I think we had about 140 volunteers all in all. So as we kind of got together in a group and brainstormed all the partners, you know, how can we honor the vets uh, on Veterans Day? And it came out, you know, a great way to do it is to put a piece of them on the reef that they built. And it's, it's not necessarily that the, the ink on it will remain, but the memories that we have today are really gonna bind and, and bond that community that we have built here together. And this is just one example of how the families that live here are more excited than anyone to see these new programs. Real work to repair the coastline that's at the center of their lives. And um, so I think it's very important um, what, they, what they've done with this project, you know, helping the vets, helping the youth, and educating people about, um, about the environment and, and how important it really is to, to, to take care of it. Nobody ever cared about this beach whatsoever. Storms come, they didn't take care of it, we had a fight with the people, and now these people here come down, they put that reef out there, the beach is built up, the horseshoe crabs are back, and the bird people come from all over the world down here to look at them birds. I, I just think it's neat. The work that we're doing on the Bay Shore is making the beaches and the marshes more stable, the wildlife more secure, and the people more connected to the place they call home. We'll see how next time on New Jersey's Hidden Coast.